you've come to the right place. If you're a course creator looking to build more impact, income, and freedom, LMS Cast is the number one podcast for course creators just like you. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of the most powerful tool for building, selling, and protecting engaging online courses called Lifter LMS. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. My name is Chris Badgett and I'm joined by a special guest, Mark Thompson. He's from Pay Kickstart, which is at paykickstart.com. It's an e-commerce subscription management and affiliate platform and it does a lot more than just that. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thanks for having me, Chris. Appreciate it. I'm super excited to get into it with you. So we're a couple of uh, software technology marketing geeks who like to solve problems for people who have membership sites and subscription recurring revenue business models. So this is going to be a really fun discussion. Uh, There's going to be stuff in here if you're an advanced entrepreneur, but also if you're just beginning, there's going to be a lot of gyms we get into. One of the places I wanted to start with with you is one of the dirty little secrets of the membership site and the online course industry is that one, people buy stuff and they don't complete it. But two, if you have a recurring revenue business charging monthly, which is the most popular, people just kind of disappear. And uh, the the course creator, the entrepreneur doesn't necessarily talk about it or they're in denial. And that what's really happening is they make a bunch of assumptions and they don't know why people are leaving. You develop some stuff at Pay Kickstart to help with that part where people cancel. What, what does your software do and can you speak to that problem? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, what, what we do is we really try to take the technical hurdles out of running an online business. And so our sweet spot are exactly kind of your same customer. So anyone who's running a membership site or you have a software company or you just, you're, you're looking to uh, manage recurring payments, uh, that's really who we help. And so, you know, we do everything from easily accept payment with Stripe or PayPal, um, uh, ACH transfers, whatever it may be. Um, and then also be able to, to manage the, the subscription, right? And that, that's everything from uh, customer co- uh, communication and notifications, uh, as well as handling churn. And so kind of what you're talking about with churn, you know, we everyone deals with it, right? And it is one of those dirty little secrets where there's there's a misconception where people think you need more traffic, right? I need more eyeballs on my website when in actuality, most people have a churn problem, right? Your churns 20, 30, 40%, you're churning it month over month and you could keep driving more traffic. But at the end of the day, if you're not fixing your churn problem, then you, it, there's no reason in spending money on, on driving traffic. And so um, one thing that we've really tried to hone in on is, is that problem of churn. And so we do have you know, there's, there's involuntary churn and then there's voluntary churn, right? Involuntary churn being, uh, you know, your credit card fails. It declines for, for some reason, or, you know, the credit card expired and update their billing details. So, you know, we have a Dunning sequence that allows you to uh, reach out to the customer and say, hey, go and update your billing details. So a lot of that stuff will, will uh, help with involuntary churn. And then there's voluntary churn, right? There's people that want to cancel. And most people that are running membership sites or recurring businesses, they don't even know the reasons why they're canceling, right? Or they, they don't have a way to capture the feedback from the customer that's canceling. And so one thing we're actually working on right now is, is kind of a cancellation saver sequence where you actually go and ask them, hey, well, why is it that you're canceling? And we found that if you just find out why they're canceling, there's a good chance that you can overcome that objection and get them to and, and save that sale. And so whether it's a pricing issue and maybe you have different plans or pricing for someone that's saying, well, it's just too expensive for me right now. You know, is there a way that you can offer me a a discount or a different plan that suits my business? Or it was just too difficult. I didn't understand how to get started. Well, in that case, you know, having a call to action to say, well, chat with us. Our customer success team is there to help you out. So, you know, it's important to understand what, what the reason is that they're canceling and then be able to ov- overcome those objections and come up with a solution to help keep them uh, and save the sale. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. Um, let's talk about that. The thing that people want, which is more eyeballs. One of the, one of the ways that people get want that is by building an army of affiliates or whatever. What, yeah. what does pay kickstart do? Like, how does it work as an affiliate platform? Because people in this space are, they typically look at something like, 
a WordPress plugin like Affiliate WP or they look at a hosted affiliate program like Share a Sale or Commission Junction or something like that. Yeah. But it's like a it's sort of a separate thing. It's a bolt on. Like how do you see or how did you develop your affiliate system for pay kickstart? Yeah, so I think that's one of our competitive advantages and one of the reasons that people use our platform is just because of how robust the solution is, the platform is, and, and how much functionality there is. So obviously we are a shopping cart, so we can handle you know accepting payments and everything from the payment and checkout experience, but we're also a full-blown affiliate platform. So it's kind of an all-in-one solution. You don't need to duct tape multiple plugins or, or, or apps to get it working. It's all kind of integrated out of the box. And so um, there's just, it's just so advanced. So obviously you can track uh, commissions for a sale. You can also track commissions for a lead. So one thing that we've noticed a lot of our, a lot of our vendors do is they'll do things like pre-launches or they'll do webinar signups or anything where you're trying to generate a lead and affiliates don't really like to promote those types of offers or, or lead generation because they're not getting compensated for it until they actually make a sale. So one thing you could do is offer, you know, a dollar per lead or whatever you want that to be um, for, you know, affiliates generating referral leads uh, to you. So that's really nice. You have the flexibility of both um, compensating your affiliates for a lead as well as a sale. Um, and then also affiliates like to have marketing materials. They like to have promotional materials like banners and email swipes. And so we actually have a built-in marketing area where you can load in all of these marketing materials and, and have your affiliates be able to access them um, easily right from within the platform. So they have their own single sign-in where they can log in, um, they can promote your product, grab their affiliate links, grab their marketing materials, you can even do contests like um, real-time leaderboards if you want to make like an event out of it where affiliates can go and promote your product and you can offer incentives for those who are your top affiliates and you can have them see a real-time leaderboard which incentivizes them more to, to promote your product. Um, another thing with affiliates, you kind of need to understand the DNA of an affiliate. Um, they're doing it to make money uh, right. nine times out of ten, right? They obviously, you know, some of them have actually used your product and believe in it. But a lot of the times they're trying to find high converting offers that they can promote to their list um, and, and still add value. But at the end of the day, they're, they're, you know, they're trying to make money from it. This is how they make a living. And so offering instant commissions is really a nice feature to have with an affiliate program where when they promote and they make a sale for you, they get paid at the point of sale, which is really nice. And it's a nice incentive for affiliates to continuously want to promote you because they get that real time gratification. Um, so there's just tons of, of flexibility with the affiliate platform. And again, it's all integrated seamlessly with, with the shopping cart. That's awesome. And I love that all in one approach because, you know, oftentimes people are doing a different e-commerce solution, a different affiliate tracking management solution, and then a different system for, you know, using a CRM or something to deliver swipe files and, you know, graphics and things like that. So just having it all integrated and designed around in one house makes ton of sense. Yeah. And, and one thing I want to add, so, you know, we, we kind of stopped at the shopping cart and affiliate management. You could obviously, I could, we could go in and try to be an email automation tool, uh, yeah. you know, a yeah. membership site. It's just, you know, at some point you need to say when and, and say like, okay, we want to focus on being the best at this. And that's really what we've focused on. And so we've integrated with a number of third party services that you do use. So like, like with Lifter LMS, we have a brand new integration that we just added this week. Um, I guess, depending on when you guys see this, um, but anyways, um, it's available. So it, it just offers seamless integration where when someone purchases from you know your checkout page, it can automatically add them to a membership level. You could even tag them and add them to your email marketing solution for future follow-up. And it just makes things so seamless and automated where you don't have to worry about, well, man, I guess if they want to upgrade to a different membership plan, they're going to have to contact our support team. Or if they need to upgrade or update their billing details, they're going to have to contact our support team. And it just becomes an, uh, a customer service nightmare um, when in, instead, if you have a seamless integration, it can handle all that and it can be automated. I love that. And, and from the, I'm, I'm often talking about WordPress. It's like all the power and flexibility without the hassle. Like Lyft LMS is an all-in-one solution. It has um, you know, some e-commerce, it, it has, um, it, it, it can send some transactional emails and behavioral based things, uh, based on behavior in the courses and whatnot. But at the end of the day, we're mostly a, a learning platform and 
it, you can, it is all in one solution, but if you want to do more advanced stuff, like what you're talking about with a, a really robust affiliate program or on the e-commerce side of things like seamless upgrade, downgrade between membership levels and stuff like that, then you can integrate out with the best solution. So I'm often, I think the reality with software, like you're saying is you could have kept going and just created an online business in a box, but sometimes there's things where you do the all in one and there's things where you integrate with best in breed. I mean, if you're going to use, like if I'm thinking about a power user using lifter, he's going to do advanced marketing and sales. They could use pay kickstart. They would use lifter for the LMS, the membership site, and maybe something like active campaign for the actual marketing automation and broadcast tool. So yeah. be minimal, like don't go crazy. It's easy to go crazy with tools, but often the best solutions involve a few key like integrations. Yeah. And, and, you know, you see this with a lot of businesses, right? They get feature happy and they want to <laughs> spread themselves thin. And this happened with, with click funnels just recently, right? We love click funnels. I mean, the guys there are great. They have a great, you know, landing page builder, but they tried to do too much. And now they're kind of backpedaling because what happened was all these new businesses that they've created, like they have a CRM and they have an email marketing solution and they try to create an affiliate platform, all this stuff. <laughs> It yeah. just, it, they didn't have the resources to make sure that it was the best of breed in the marketplace. And so they've kind of gone back now to their bread and butter of, hey, let's be the best landing page builder and funnel builder we can possibly be. And so, you know, like in, in your scenario, obviously your bread and butter is, is the learning side of things. And yes, you do have the, the shopping cart. And, and for some people who you just need a basic way to check out. That, that can be totally fine. But if you're looking for something more advanced, if you need one click upsells, if you want order bumps, if you want um, you know, uh, more flexibility with your checkout pages or checkout widgets, that kind of stuff, then it's always, that's, that's when a lot of people will come to us and, and they're happy with a solution like that we provide. That is awesome. Well, you also have some interesting optics on people using your software of what's, like you're probably recognizing patterns of things that, people who are successful with your tool are doing. So I have some questions around that. Like what's, what is the average, affil I get asked this question, so I'm gonna ask the expert. What okay. is, people ask me, what should I charge in terms of affiliate commission for my digital course or membership site? And should yeah, I do a, like a, recurring or one time or what, how do I do it? Yeah, that's, it's a really good question and it's kind of a loaded question. So you kind of have to, to dive into it. So it, a lot of it depends on the, your position in the marketplace and kind of what your clout is, right? So, you know, if, if, if uh, you know, Slack or one of these mainstream software applications wants to create a membership or an affiliate uh, program, they have so much clout in the space and people naturally use it as, as kind of the backbone in their business that they have the ability to offer a lower commission. So you're going to see main like an Amazon, like an Amazon affiliate commission. Yeah. I mean, like Amazon is probably the lowest. It, 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 I think it's like, like three to 6%, um, yeah. which, but they can do that, right. Just because they <laughs> right. have all the traffic already. Um, when you look at these mainstream SaaS applications, you know, Slack, a fresh desk, uh, you know, any of these, these big guys, Salesforce, they usually give about 20%. Because they can, right? It's not their main, it's not their sweet spot. It's not their main focus on getting it. But um, if you're just starting out and you want a inexpensive way to drive traffic to your offers, then that's, that's when affiliate marketing is, is such a great tool. Um, it's, it's free, right? It's, it's free traffic. You're only compensating them when they actually make a sale. And so, but the, the trade-off is that you need to give them a higher commission. So usually the norm is anywhere between 30 and 50%. Okay. If you're just starting out and you want to get affiliates on board, obviously the higher up you can go, the, the better, but then obviously, you know, you have to juggle your expenses and make sure that it's affordable. And so, and you could, you could obviously lower that as you start to be, be more known in your marketplace and you have other traffic generation techniques that are, are reducing the cost per acquisition, the cost per, you know, for, for a customer. So, you know, anywhere between 30 and 50% is kind of the industry norm as you start to grow and start to scale an affiliate and you don't have to rely so much on affiliates, um, uh, you can start to back that off. But it's always good to have that affiliate program because it's just one spoke in your wheel of driving traffic. That's awesome. Well, I, just to share my like, experience with affiliates as a software company, I have somewhere around 600 affiliates. Of those, 
maybe 60 have made sales and of those there's like five or so power affiliates is that like a normal distribution it is it is the, the, <laughs> okay. the 80 20 rule definitely <laughs> kicks okay. in here and so what you want to do is uh, recognize who those power affiliates are and help them out as much as you can so obviously build personal connections with them and figure out other ways that you can integrate your product into their business. Um, a lot of the, you know, there's many affiliates who are not just affiliate marketers, they're also vendors, they're also selling their own products. And so figure out other ways because if they're making a lot of sales from you, there's obviously a good cross pollination of, of customers here. So figure out ways that you can integrate your product into their business. That's great. Another uh, just optics question I have for you. Uh, we see a lot of people and we encourage it too. Uh, before people go into what I call the course creation cave and spend two years making something, we encourage people to pre-sell. How, do, how, do, how can people like pre-sell with pay kickstart or validate? I guess, how can they pre-sell and what do you see in your customer base of people who kind of validate well and get traction and get money early and often? Yeah, so I don't I don't know if this is necessarily a pay kickstart solution. Um, it's more of just like, how do you gauge the audience and know that you have kind of a, a minimum viable product that when you do create that out of the gate, that people are going to want it. And so I think a lot of it is is market research, understanding your audience, um, asking a lot of questions, sitting on the sidelines and just seeing what pains people have looking at your competitors to see what they're doing and seeing how, you know, uh, if, if they're successful or not and what parts of their business are successful. Um, so like for a lot of membership sites, they do coaching as well. What type of coaching are they doing? Are they doing group coaching? Are they doing one-on-one -on -one coaching? Um, what, like what medium are they using? Is it online? Are they doing events? You know, if you have an older crowd, older crowds still like to do, you know, in-person events. If you have a younger crowd, maybe virtual group uh, coaching is, is easier. So I think a lot of it is sitting back on the sidelines and, and, and learning more about who your audience is. And then also being proactive in social media, on Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups, and just asking questions about, hey, you know, I'd love to know what are some of your main challenges and building out your course around what those challenges are. And then even saying, hey, here's here's what I'm looking to build and here's kind of the core training I'm going to have. And then outside of the core training, we're going to be doing discussions and, and, and that type of stuff. And here are the different topics that I wanted to talk about. W would you like, is this something you'd even be interested in? And if you're getting a lot of people saying yes, 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 yes. Well then build a list of those people, start to talk to them. And then once it is ready, that's your kind of go to, you know, your first customers and say, Hey, I would love for you to dive in here. And even if you give it away for free for the first 10 people, or just, you know, say, Hey, for, you know, a hundred bucks or whatever, you, you can get access to this just so you can get those first few customers because that's, that's what really gets the ball rolling. And then that's your voice, right? That, that's the person that you want to listen to and say, okay, well, I'm on the right track with this. I'm not on the right track with that. Uh, people like this content better than this content. And I need to go and, and, and create more content around this particular topic. Well, you're on a roll. So I'll just ask for more. <laughs> what is the, uh, what other kind of like launching strategies do you have or you see some of your customers using effectively that maybe aren't obvious or are counterintuitive so uh you know we've done tons of different product launches and and what's what's really powerful about a product launch is it can catapult a business to to kind of immediate success it can really just you can build that that mvp and get uh, customer validation very very quickly um, and so we've done over a dozen product launches. Some have been, you know, we've generated six figures in a week. We've done over seven figures in a week as well. And so the, the DNA of a product launch, a good product launch is obviously building awareness. So, um, you know, having like, I would definitely recommend having some pre-launch buzz just to build awareness of what your product is, get people talking about it, get people excited about it. Um, and then obviously getting your affiliates on board as well. So creating an affiliate page or a JV page that is really, that's a sales page to your JVs, right? So it's, it's a sales page to your affiliates telling them why they should promote you. There's lots of different offers out there. What makes your product so special and, and how are they going to make money and how, how are they going to build value when they go and tell their customers about it? So having that affiliate page that sells your product giving them all the details, making it super easy for them to go and promote you. Um, so when you do open that cart, um, it's very easy and, and, and you can get a flood of traffic and a flood of sales in a short amount of time. And you can build urgency into that product launch. So uh, for those of you who are just starting a brand new business, 
getting those first early adopters is so crucial to get that momentum with your business. And so even if you do have to offer it at a, at a discount, or maybe you offer it at a one-time fee, and then on the back end in your sales funnel, you have some sort of recurring model on the back end. And one thing that I've seen a huge mistake with people launching a new business or a new product is they don't, they get stuck in that, that one-time pricing model where they, they get a whole bunch of sales up front, they get a lot of revenue up front, and they have no recurring revenue, and, and the sales go up, and then it just dives, it just takes a nosedive, and there's no momentum built after that launch. And, and it's kind of a lose-lose situation because the customer loses out because they're not getting the, the benefits of the, the product long-term. And the, the, the vendor is getting, uh, you know, they're losing out because they're not seeing long-term revenue. So that's why I always feel like the recurring model is so popular. And if you can align the value with your product, the customer value with your product, then it's a win-win for everybody because they're glad, they're happy to pay you every single month or every year um, because you're providing ongoing value. And whether it's a software company adding new features or it's, it's, a, it's a membership site and you're offering more training and coaching. So um, make sure you build in some sort of recurring revenue, whether it is on the front end. Usually when you're doing a product launch, you wanna offer a one-time fee on the front end so you can get that initial customer and then upsell them into recurring on the back end. Wow, that's a, that's a gold mine right there. So you're, you're saying a uh, product launch is a good thing to do, but make sure you have a back end, a recurring revenue model. Like, let's say I have like a transformational course, like a big, you know, 500, 1000, $2,000 course or whatever. But then maybe there's a membership on the back end of that. That's $300 a month or $30 a month, $100 a month, $500 a month, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. And especially when, when you're working with affiliate partners, the trick to get them to promote you is to have a, a high converting offer. Now, one of the problems with doing a product launch is product launches are usually done in a short amount of time, like a week or 10 days. And it's very hard to get someone to buy from you if you're right out of the gate asking them to pay you $99 a month, right? If yeah. they don't know who you are, people that never heard of your product before, it's a brand new business. So if, you, if affiliates are gonna drive traffic to a recurring offer on the front end, the, the conversions are going to be really low. The earnings per click are going to be super low and affiliates aren't going to make money off of it. And so the affiliates aren't, are going to stop promoting it after they've maybe sent one email to their list. So in order to get your earnings per click up and conversions up, you offer them a one-time uh, offer on the front end so that affiliate can get paid, right? And then on the back end have some sort of recurring. And when I say on the back end, it can be an immediate upsell right after they purchase, or it could be down the road in your autoresponder sequence, right? So like if you're selling Lifter LMS, you could offer some sort of a training course on the front end of how to build membership sites and all that kind of fun stuff. And then your back end offer is Lifter LMS um, and, and they pay recurring on it. Um, and so the, the most successful product launches I've seen are the ones that have a front end uh, one time offer or one time uh, price, and then one, two, or three upsells on the back end, with at least one of those being recurring. Wow, that's that's super golden. Um, I often seen people approach affiliate out of order, and you said something. You went over it pretty quickly, but I just want to highlight it that uh, affiliates, there's a it's not like a starting strategy. If your offer is not converting its itself, like if you don't have, if you can't get your offer to convert or it's low or you have a really low conversion rate, um, that's not the time to start getting affiliates on board because you got to fix that. If you bring an affiliate in and do all the work, build a relationship, all that stuff, set them up, but your offer doesn't convert, it, that, that relationship's not going to go anywhere. So I, sometimes I see people trying to do affiliate too early. You got to spend some time on the, on the conversions there. Yeah, ab absolutely. And so the, the key, if you can convert cold traffic, like if you're running cold Facebook traffic or, or any type of paid cold traffic, if that can, if you can get that to convert, well, then you can go to your affiliates and say, hey, this is what it's converting at with cold traffic. Now, imagine if you promote it with a warm list of your subscribers and customers that's relevant to this product, it's going to convert at three times higher. That's, that's sweet. What about... Um affiliates and recurring revenue like some i know like some software companies like i'm thinking of 
I think Aweber back in the day, like, and, and there's, a, there's others that like the affiliates get recurring commissions. Do you recommend recurring commissions or, or you were kind of talking about like if you have a big product on the front end and the affiliate takes in a nice 20, 30, 50% chunk, but then the recurring revenue just stays with the business owner and it's not part of it. What do you recommend or do you, re it, it depends or what? It depends. Um, I, you know, I always like to give at least some recurring, even if it's low, just because sometimes it, it can actually backfire on you if, you know, all, all these affiliates are driving new customers to you and they, they make that initial sale, which is great. They, they're happy about that, but then they're not making anything on the recurring and it can kind of leave a sour taste in their mouth. So even if you can give them something, so I've seen a lot of people say, I'll give you 50% uh, commissions on the initial sale and then 25 or 30% uh, on the rebills um, as long as they're a customer. Um, so, and, and that really does help to your advantage. Hey, if, if you're paying out rebills or rebuild commissions, that means you're making money long-term, right? They're, pay, they're paying you month after month. So it, it can be an added incentive for that affiliate if they're like, hey, man, I'm making five grand a month off of recurring commissions month after month. I should probably continue to promote them. Right. Whereas if you just like did a product launch, it was for seven days, you only paid them on the initial sale and then that was it. You know, there's really not an incentive for them to continuously to, uh, to want to promote you evergreen long term. That's awesome. What I mean, you're an advanced marketer and sales professional who or who are some of your influences? Like if somebody wants to learn more about product launches and just marketing and affiliate marketing, who are some people or resources that you recommend or good to learn from i mean jeff walker was the original product launch guy right yeah he, he was i mean a lot of what i learned was was from jeff i mean he he kind of invented the whole product launch formula um and i think you know the product launch formula there's there's pros and cons to it and and there's certain you should use it in certain scenarios if you're just trying to get like get a, a business you know started um it, or like you have a new you have a whole bunch of new features and you want to kind of relaunch it and build a you know a, an event out of it um that works really well and so um you know, but put your own spin on it, right? There's lots of different variations that I've done over the years to kind of put my own spin on it. Um, and so, yeah, Jeff, Jeff's a great guy. Jeff Walker's a good one to, to follow. Um, Russell Brunson from, from Click Funnels. Um, God, I mean, there's just, there's, there's so many. It's like uh, all the like, um, all the like CEOs and founders of mainstream SaaS companies, like yeah. Intercom, they, they have tons of really good content. Hub, uh, HubSpot has a ton of really good content. Um, it, it just really depends on what industry you're in. Right. Um, I don't know. God, who, who do you like? Who do you follow? There's so many. It's like, well, we're, I'm, both, I can't uh, a blank. <laughs> we're both fans of, uh, Dan Martell. Yep. Dan and, from, from SAS Academy. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot, like I'm, I'm also like really in this space and I'm like, well, there's like so many, how do I, how do I yeah. pick? But I think the important, one of the important things you mentioned is if you're a course creator, a membership site creator, sort of the early adopters of all this are like software companies. So watch how software companies uh, do marketing and how they do recurring revenue models and stuff like that. Because you can often learn from another another industry. Yep. Um, this is super cool. What is the best way to get started with Pay Kickstart? How do people, uh, when they first come into it, like what, what is the fastest path to kind of getting going? What do people do if they want to try it out? So uh, we have a 14 day free trial. So you can just go to paykickstart.com uh, and then click on the pricing page. And um, we have three different plans. We're actually going to be redoing our pricing in the near future. So depending on when you see this, the price may increase a little bit. But anyways, there's a free trial for all of our plans. You can go in, sign up for, for a 14 day free trial. As soon as you get into the application, there's an onboarding uh, modal that will walk you through step by step how to get your first product live and, and ready to start selling just to kind of get you acclimated to the platform. Um, and then there's a ton of resources. Um, we have some quick start guides that you can print out and just follow the quick start guides. Um, if you don't want to follow the, the kind of in-app in onboarding. And then we also have 24 seven live chat. Um, you can just click the little um, bubble chat bubble in the bottom right hand corner. And we have people there to, to answer your questions 24 seven. We have uh, a knowledge base. So that's probably the best place to start if you have specific questions because we have just we keep we keep adding to this knowledge base and there's tons of articles just walking you through um step by step how to do 
whatever it is that you're looking to do inside the platform. So there's lots of, of resources to help uh, make sure you're successful and, and you understand what to do. And what's in your on-demand webinars? I see that on your site. What are those? Yeah, so, so we run webinars uh, usually about once a month and just on different topics. So it's really just educational webinars, just teaching you, you know, ways to you know, build your affiliate program or how to maximize conversions, how to minimize churn. Um, I think there's a webinar about like how to handle disputes and chargebacks. So we're just, you know, just any kind of pains and challenges that you've had along the way. We're like, oh, that's a really good idea. Let's, let's create a webinar out of it and you can access it there. So feel free to, to you know, go around and we have a blog and we have uh, white papers, we have webinars. So there's lots of free content that you can get, even if you're just kind of looking around for uh, free, free content and um, you don't necessarily want to be a paid Kickstarter customer, that's fine. I think you'll, you'll enjoy a lot of the content that we have on the website. Awesome. Well, go check that out at paykickstart.com. Mark, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I really appreciate you adding Lifter LMS integration. It means a lot. And I'd encourage you, the listener, to go check out paykickstart.com. Thanks for having me, Chris. Appreciate it. And that's a wrap for this episode of LMS Cast. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I hope you enjoyed the show. This show was brought to you by Lifter LMS the number one tool for creating, selling, and protecting engaging online courses to help you get more revenue, freedom, and impact in your life. Head on over to lifterlms.com and get the best gear for your course creator journey. Let's build the most engaging results getting courses on the internet.